What's up everybody? Today we are going to look at the forklift side of the wire guidance and what's actually locking onto the wire that's out there. So first I'll show you the, uh, the hard to reach um, sensor and then we'll go over the rest of it. Just a moment. And the rear sensor that right there that's the power and data cable the power and data cable for it so as you can see that's kind of closer to the center compared to the rest of it all right now well, that we got the front sensor out of the way because that's weird to get to. Let's go over the rest of the system. So when you're driving, you're gonna roll up to that yellow line you saw in part one. You're gonna get the truck pretty lined up dead center as close as you can, as long as you're within say six inches. Then you're gonna flick this switch. And when you flick this switch, this light up top, will start flashing to indicate that it's looking for the wire. This light here will flash and actually the little light on the switch will flash and we'll see that when we're doing a run demonstration. Uh, but you flick them on it starts beeping. This tells you that it's seeking the wire in the floor and uh, tries to get you on there. Keeps you at a constant speed depending on your height. And you go from there. Now part of this system, besides the switch and the lights, you got the this little controller there. That's your CAN I/O. That takes all your inputs and outputs from you know, your various switches and such, and distributes it to the rest of the controllers. And you got that front sensor you saw under there. And you come back here. You got steer controller. The steer controller and the can I.O. are what kind of take control when you're going with, uh, when you're on the wire. Because at that point, when you're on the wire, you no longer have control of the steer motor. Because the truck takes over to steer to try and keep it on that line. You got your traction motor that moves you. And the other sensor, wire guided sensor, you can't see it but you can kind of see the mounting bolts. So you got bolt there, bolt there, over there, those four. That's where the sensor is bolted underneath this bumper. So it's nice and low to the floor. This sensor is for the OAS system, as you've seen in other videos possibly. So that's uh, what goes on between that sensor and the one up front. The one up front in there, you keep, you know, tries to keep them both on the line. Now the thing to remember, is since that front sensor is pretty close to center mass, that driving forward is much more accurate because it will guide you through the turns more subtly. Where if you're driving backwards, with that being at center mass and it trying to control the steer on the back, like the fork will actually sometimes it'll get so wobbly that it will just come off the wire. Whereas going forward, the most you'll get is just the slightest little wiggle. Like we, in part one, you saw like maybe a quarter inch on the, on the runway out there. I mean, you can even see the, if you look close, you can even see from here, the stripes on the floor from where they run pretty accurately all the time. So that's that. And once you're on the wire, it, uh, it takes control and all you have is throttle and up and down and the higher you go up the slower it makes you go uh, just so you don't you know fall over and get jostled around or hit anything while you're up high because they do occasionally hit that bar that safety bar occasionally gets hung up oops, on uh, pallets and stuff sticking out of the aisleways so yeah, that's the system overview, the basic system overview. 
Uh, again, this does run on 6.25 kilohertz. Um, or, yeah, 6.25. That's about it. Uh, it's a little more, I guess, a little more complicated software and tuning-wise than that, but as far as operating, that's where that goes. So I guess next time, we'll actually jump on the wire and I'll show you what's going on. Alright, thanks for watching and subscribe if you enjoyed. See ya.